Greetings. Jo oh. All right. I'm George from Pavlicek Studios, and I will be making a glass marble today. I'll be making it out of glass rods, and I'll be using some hemispherical graphite marble molds. The marble I'm making today uh, is, I call it Galicia. It's basically like, well, not basically. It's my take on a galaxy design. Uh, so many other people were calling their marbles galaxies. When I first started uh, showing my take on it, I decided to go with the uh, Galicia name um, just to uh, make a differentiation, um, make it easier for people to know who was making it. So today I'm going to use uh, gold and silver foil. I start with a little piece of gold like that. And I've got some, this is a glow dust encased, it will focus, rod. And then this is a UV glass rod. Let's see if I can put them together and put something behind them. You can see them. One has got sort of a almost opaque look on the camera, but it's actually kind of translucent. And then the other rod, the clearer one, is the UV glass. Anyway, it's going to be mostly clear. It'll be um, a layer of gold, a layer of UV glass, some color, a layer of clear, some color, another layer of clear, some more UV another layer of clear, some more uh, gold, then um, it'll, I'll even it up from side to side and start twisting it. And it'll get twisted on several axes to give it that galaxy look, and let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is get a gather of clear to start my whole marble on. It's going to be a series of stacked dots, so it'll start looking like a cylinder as I go. Um, then once everything is assembled, then you start collapsing it into a sphere and doing uh, the internal shaping through twisting of the outside. Let me do this a little more so that you'll understand what I'm talking about. Here, let me do some of this because then you'll understand the layers part and then I'll do the twisting part like this. There, clear. I'm glad we got that worked out. Let's go. That noise when I turn on my torch is uh, the flame was on, so that was the propane portion. I turn on the oxygen. Sometimes there's a little uh, ignition explosion within the jets of the torch head where the oxygen and propane are mixed like little tiny um, engine cylinders. So I'm going to be waving this rod and flashing it because I want to get it up to temperature without it's shattering. Every time I put it to the flame, I'm bringing the temperature up a little bit more until finally when I get it up to about 500 degrees, little chips like that shouldn't be flying off and sticking to my arm. So I can just leave it in there. Once you've melted the tip of a rod, it starts looking like rounded like that. This one was like this, where it had been cut from where uh, I get them as about 40 inches long and I cut them in a third, so they end up being uh, a little over a foot long, which is a nice length. Uh, you start off with a, I mean, you could just cut them in half, but then you'd have the big end always getting in your way so it's sort of nice having a new rod but it's that medium size that's really the most convenient um, nothing is ever perfect so you're always adjusting it's either too long or too short you're burning yourself it's too cold there's too much weight on it and your arms getting tired whatever just deal with it you're having a good time you don't even think about it you're just automatically doing all those little adjustments once you've done it a bunch of times. Like you don't think really when you have to stop flashing, it's just like innate. 
that becomes part of you. Like any basic art form, you sort of master a skill set over time, uh, you learn from some mistakes and getting some things right, and then you sort of pull those mistakes and right parts apart and put together the way you want to do it as you move forward. And a lot of times that changes depending on what you want the final thing, the final product to be. Do I want to include that happy accident that happened that made it do the thing that I like? Or uh, do I want to do it just very straightforward this time? Or am I going to like do this technique but only extreme and then I'm going to do that other thing to it to make it stop being extreme but it'll have this little dent in it that I need to move on to my next step. It's all very esoteric. Saying it out loud makes it sound dumb but it's not. It's part of the, the thought that goes into anything that you make. So right now I started heating this rod and it was new and it had a cut end. And so you saw me earlier, I was went in there with a tweezer and I was grabbing off some areas of impurities just so that the gather would be clean and hot and nice and not have bubbles in it or little surface scum. And because I was talking, I wa it wasn't even registering that I was doing that. Just harkening back to uh, two minutes ago, it, it had become such an unconscious procedure that I would go back and pick debris or impurities out of the gather. I just did it without even thinking and I was continuing my other previous thought. Hopefully eloquently. Probably not. <laughs> so this gather is the size that I want now. You can see it's drooping very hot. I'm going to press it on my marble plate, which is a graphite plate that's about 12 inches by 12 inches. This is just a tiny, like, 2 inch by 3 inch paddle that I can use to press on things. Graphite's neat because it, it takes heat out of the glass right away so you can move on to your next step. So ideally, I uh, can use the, my torch head if I don't want to take heat out because it's metal, it won't um, siphon off heat from the glass very quickly. Uh, graphite does it more quickly. So once I put that flat surface in with the marver, that's going to stay relatively flat, that chilled flat surface. If I was using a steel marver, this would want to uh, try to go back into a rounder, more surface tension pulled shape. Um, if I was in a groove making these over and over again, from when I was flattening this, I would have gone right away and picked up my, my first foil, which I do have ready, and I'm going to pick up now. I just need the temperature to be just right on the end. It has to be just starting to turn orange. I let it cool a little bit so it grabs the foil, but it doesn't doesn't burn through the foil. You can see that that's silver. I'll get gold um, on the bookend side of this. So the next thing I need to do is start my other large clear glass rod flashing to get the temperature up. This piece that I'm, I'm working on, I just I want to make sure it stays uh, hot. When I say hot, I want it to be like in the 12 to 1500 degree range, um, hot enough so that if I push it, I can get it moving again, <clears throat> but not less than uh, 1200 or 1000, or it's going to start to crackle and quite possibly could crack off the end of this rod that I'm working on. If I was worried about temperature fluctuations uh, over time and not being able to be it, exceptionally mindful of that, I could switch that, this glass rod to a metal handle or a punty rod, uh, which is more forgiving than a glass rod for being attached. You can shock it, uh, change the temperature really fast, which is nice, um, but 
I don't need to do that yet. And the glass, the large glass rods, actually a little more comfortable to hold on to than the smaller metal handle. I mean, you get used to anything, but it's nice just to have a, a larger diameter to roll around. You can see it's kind of a natural motion for your hand to keep that spinning. Well, natural for me. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I don't remember it ever not being easier to do the larger diameter rotation. It seems like the, the smaller one um, requires a little more concentration to maintain control of. I don't know. I'll think about that now that I've said it out loud. So this gather is getting pretty large and it's very hot. It keeps flopping over. So I'm going to put it over the foil and squish it down a little bit and then bring it into the flame to detach it from the rod. I'm going to just quickly flatten that. So that's my next layer. I'm doing two layers of color here um, and I'm going to use a transparent pink and an opaque pink. So let's do the opaque one first. And then I, I misspoke earlier when I said I was going to do, if I alluded to doing uh, separate UV layers, I'm going to sort of piggyback the different types, the two different types of UV glass that I'm going to use in with this dots of color here. So there is the pink dot on. <clears throat> I cooled the top edge of it just to make sure that it doesn't shrink or grow from that size as I'm working it. So now the first kind of UV glass is actually also uh, activated by regular photons and we'll make it glow even not in the dark. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's even excited by the heat of the torch. You can see the shaft is going a little bit blue. And that's the difference between glow powder and UV glass. And so I'm putting a few dots of that. It's going to get stripped way out. So <clears throat> where it goes in is important, but not hyper important. There you can see that blue glow on the rod. So this, the glow glass is kind of a ceramic powder. It's very difficult to encase. Um, not difficult, it's stubborn. It doesn't want to be covered in clear, but once you get it sort of entrained within the clear, you can uh, keep mixing it once it's, it heats up and it becomes mm, almost nicely workable. Not really. <laughs> it's very stiff. It's like mixing um, two different kinds of glass once that glow powder is in it. It really doesn't take that much of that uh, powder to mess up the viscosity of the glass. I'll demonstrate that one day. These glow powders that I've been hesitant to use because it takes that extra step of prep work. And so, one day when I got into it, I just pulled like 20, um, like two to three millimeter stringers of uh, this size. And I just spent sparingly using them over the last couple of years. So, but I have like all these different colors, so I'm, I should try one. I could do like, like three different colors of glow powder and two different colors of UV glass inside something. That would be crazy good. I think there's some techniques that I don't usually do, but might make great demonstrations. I do a model called a Mobius, which is actually a tube that's twisted and encased. Uh, not a tube so much as a, well, it's hard to describe. A tube might be the best way to say it. And then one mar kind of marble you see a lot uh, in the borosilicate marble world which is not what I'm doing. Uh, but it's cool because they have a, some really nice uh, clear 
clarity. And so they do a marble called a vortex, where it's just, it's mostly clear. It's like a, a, a taper that's decorated. And then when you look at it, because of the magnification of the glass, it looks like the, the inside of a funnel that is actually deeper than the whole size of the marble that you're looking at. It's, it's cool. Um, I think of many uh, early borosilicate marble makers, that was like their one trick. Um, and so a lot the, you see the back half of the marble is almost forgotten. Um, it's like, you know, stuck in frit or something like that. There's no design on it. It wasn't until probably five years later that you started seeing people really do, start doing some interesting uh, decorations on the back. Maybe yeah, five years. Maybe two. I don't know. I wasn't paying that much of attention anyway. Just cool to see what other people are doing and where their focus is. You know, they're focusing all on the inside and uh, not as much on the outside. Now that's that's fixed. Marbles are cool because um, they can be interesting and different from all kinds of varying angles. While I was talking, I put some uh, raspberry clear glass as a dot and then some regular UV glass around it on that layer. And now I'm going to encase that in clear with a nice big clear gather. See that starting to happen. So my rod is cracking off here. A little worried. If it does crack off, you'll see me probably quickly heat up a stainless steel punty and uh, pass it back and forth a couple times to get the positioning correct again. So there is my next clear gather. I sort of slopped it on there. And then pull it away, quickly flatten it. And I'm working on my next layer. So I'm gonna, before that cools down too much, I'm gonna pick up my gold. I have it covered with a little piece of red paper. I have a special tweezers for grabbing foil and gold leaf. Normally I use a serrated tweezer. Um, it gives a better contact point between the hot glass and the uh, metal surface. And also if you just want to grab like little rods and stringers that might be hot um, that are in your way of like another rod or something like that, the uh, textured tweezer just gives a better first time contact between the glass and the metal. I'm going to wave at a few people here. Thanks for coming. And so there is the gold. Um, oh, that fell off. All right, I'm going to quickly heat up a rod and grab that. <laughs> Keep the whole thing heating up. This as well. I just grabbed it because I didn't want it to cool down. Having a, a smaller glass rod at the ready to just heat up the tip and be able to pick up your piece is very handy. I keep some of these smaller glass rods on my bench for um, some of my final attachment points for the marble. So let me heat up, let me heat up that rod that used to be attached to the big glass rod. Let me get my metal pumpkin attached right in the middle of this board right in. You know I can detach that clear glass rod. So that is kind of a problem of working the soft leaded glass. 
many leaded glass, uh, lead crystal glass workers are working um, tiny bits of glass off steel blowpipes. And so you won't see them having that kind of cracking problem with the volume that I'm dealing with here as a lump. Um, now you can see there's some points on there. It's hard to see there's text in my way today. I gotta get that those impurities off. That's where it touched the bench. That first moment when it was hot. And the glass got messed up. Mixed with uh, the white paint that I painted the cement board of the surface with so that I could see uh, glass chips eat more easily. But if ever I do grab something, the surface becomes immediately contaminated and has to be removed as I'm doing right now. So I pulled off a lot of the weird areas and now I can return to work. So how much time did I lose because of that cracked off? Okay. three or four minutes. Now, my foil is still in good shape on the end. I didn't panic and burn it off. So now I can start getting my gather to cover that. I'm going to use two of those gathers that I got to build all those layers together to complete this end and sort of bookend the marble. Because this glass from this where it cracked off is going to melt in, some of it's going to melt in to the, this attached side of the marble. I'll use my tweezers to go in there and grab some hot glass off of the bigger end to get it to balance from side to side before I compress it down into a sphere. Essentially now it's just a short cylinder. And I'm just heating everything to keep the heat even. You can start seeing all the layers more fully melt together and in another minute or two you'll be able to see all those dots and all those layers of foil and UV glass within the cylinder. Right now the lines of uh, separation from where I constructed those discs and pressed them all together are still kind of uh, visually obscuring all the dots inside, but I can see as the surface tension is starting to pull the surface clear, you can see those details resolve inside. It's still a little chaotic look, looking on the surface because there's some of those uh, surfaces that are sticking up from where I went in there with the tweezers and grabbed off the crappy uh, oxidized glass or the glass that had contaminants melted into the surface. So now I'm getting another gather off of this rod. And this will be my final gather for the marble and then I'm going to just do a little touch up from side to side to get it even and then we'll start giving it the manipulation it will need to transform those dots and layers of foil and UV glass into the galaxy design. What it's going to be first is just a straight twist through a pole that's a little bit greater than 90 degrees through the center of this cylinder. I'm going to make a new axis that's going to bisect the two colored dots in the center of this cylinder and give it a twist so that the, the poles don't twist, but the middle of the marble does like five to ten rotations, depending on what kind of stretch I'm getting out of the, out of the color in there that I'm seeing. I don't usually count. It's, it's kind of you, you go by feel, and you're just giving it such a little twist each second or two that it's hard to know how many actual revolutions you put in the glass. I have done some tests where I'll take the, uh, the little disc 
of color and I'll put a different dot of color on the edge of it before I encase the whole thing. Um, kind of like the way I, you might have seen me decorate some flowers where I do a little tiny slug of glass and then on one side I'll put a dot with a different contrasting color and that will be the petal color on the inside or the outside of that little slug as it gets bloomed out into a petal. And uh, for a flower you're taking a disc and you're turning it inside out and here you're taking the discs and you're rotating them around an axis. That's pretty technical. I'm going to squish it. And I'm going to squish it sideways. It'll be really nice. <laughs> now you can see all the layers of foil and UV and colored dots. So I'm actually liking what I see as far as balance from end to end. So I'm going to just bump up my heat a little bit. I'm going to sphericalize the free end, the end that's not attached to a punty or the handle that I'm currently using. And once I hemisphere the free end, I'm going to attach a steel rod to it and hemisphere up the other end that's currently attached. And this is just a very rough shaping, so I'm going to go into a large mold, much larger than I'm using here, and just press it a little bit spherical, and then just some light rotation. Not getting too ambitious. So I've spherical-ized that end. Now I'm going to take another steel punty. It was a little crooked, so I was using some heat to get that a little more even. I also don't like to have my marble in the back flame when I'm first heating these steel punties, because a lot of times there's little pieces on there, and the pressure of the gas and the heating of the steel often makes little things pop off and gas out of the steel rod, and I don't want them to deposit on the surface of my marble. So I heated that till it was orange, and I bored into the surface that was unattached. Now I can go back to where I have been attached, and I'm going to melt that out. There's kind of a junction between the rod and the surface of the sphere. So I'm going to heat that and see if I can get that to pull in on its own. If I press it in, it's going to become a line in the glass that you can see that you'll have to go back in and tweeze out. It'll be like light foam. Sometimes if you have the heat and the glass just right and evenly distributed on the surface, you can quickly go into a mold and you won't get that line. Um, and sometimes if I'm in the groove and I'm going fast and things are uh, ideal, <laughs> that happens. So here you can see that nub is kind of getting pulled into the rest of the sphere just by surface tension and rotation. And that's sort of what I want. And once that juncture point get, you know, it starts off at almost a 90 degree angle. And as, as it pulls in, that angle becomes more uh, acute, acute, obtuse. Um, and as it becomes more obtuse, it's less likely to make a line when you finally do go back and shape it. So I want it to obtusify so I can spherical-ize this. You may quote me on that. <laughs> All right, let's run it through the mold. You go through a big one, a little light pressure, go through a smaller one and see how far I got. 
see, there's kind of a divot there. That's close. And my my layers are nice and balanced from side to side. A lot of times that's why I do that second gather on the last end. And uh, I refer to it as bookending. I'm just balancing it. I know from experience that 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 piece that you melt off the large rod actually comes to equal a gather on the other side. It depends on how much you're putting on each time you heat the rod and put it on there. I'm doing a lot and because that's why I'm using big rods. I, I want a lot to go on there. I don't want you know a bunch of different dots on there. I want as few dots as possible to need as little air bubbles and, and visual weaving of the light as possible. I want to weave the light myself with the layers of color and metal and not my uh, differing glass rods making um, slight offsets in the index of refraction. There, now it's Spherical. I got that divot out. Let's get in there. So now I'm going to do my first rotation on the pole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Do this for a different effect. And so I want there to be a, a tunnel of clear going all the way through this axis of rotation. And the way to do that is to attach on the plane of one color. So I'm attaching on the plane of the opaque right there. Now I'm going to detach my handle from uh, the original axis of the cylinder. Get that out there. Now I have a little bit of a bit there. I'm just going to clean that up. I'm heating my handle and letting it hang down so that it's balanced. I'm going to pick that big handle up again. Now, I've attached on the plane of the opaque there. So I'm going to attach opposite on the plane of the transparent. And then start to rotate it. So that's why I said my original axis of rotation was going to be greater than 90 degrees offset. Because I actually, you can see, it's just like 5 degrees off of that original perpendicular. And you could certainly do perpendicular. You could do slightly more. You could do slightly less. I like this way, the correct way my way. Take notes. <laughs> All right, so my goal here is to have the marble evenly heated all the way through so I can impart twist all the way through the marble while having the attachment points of the handle actually be a little bit cooler so that they as I spin those sort of hard crust on the poles, I'm turning, twisting the, the inner magma and giving it that rotation. And because I punted off a little bit off the, uh, the perpendicular, it's not an even, but it's going to even out as I go. It's a little bit off. And had I not balanced it from end to end of the original cylinder, it would be way off and kind of difficult to handle. So even though I got it really close, I'm still feeling a little bit 
off balance here. And as I start to twist it, once I get one rotation in, it's going to balance back out. Let's watch and find out. Tune in next week. No, it'll just be a minute. Not next week. Next week I'm doing something else. Now you can see, we got some twists starting to happen. I'm gonna get a few more. So I'm I'm sort of twisting with both hands, but I'm as I twist with either hand, I'm occasionally just catching a little with one hand or the other. I probably have a dominant hand here that's twisting and catching. My right hand is catching and my left hand is twisting. But no, I guess I do both. I'm trying to detach my brain control here. And go on automatic. And see what and then observe what's happening. But yeah, there definitely is more catching with the right hand than the left. But it goes back and forth. Alright, so now I'm starting to see some twist go in there. I'd call that about 50, one and a half a rotation. It's hard to get close with all the glass rods and stuff that are just off camera. There's like eight jars full of glass rods. It looks like an explosion. Yeah, you can probably go back and watch uh, the pre-show at some point and see how many, how much stuff there is going on here so that I can have access to grab all the stuff that I might need. So now that we've got one rotation, you see the shape is a bit off, but it is more balanced around that the new axis. It's not perfectly straight. It's not a concern right now. I'm more concerned with what's happening inside than on the surface. The surface is last. And because this marble is clear, I can see those little tiny dots and that little bit of foil that's turning into a big deal on the inside. It's starting to look pretty cool. Very spinny. So probably another rotation and a half. And then I will give it a light rounding and switch my axis again and give it that last twist which is going to give it that galaxy look. Alright, I'm going to even my arms up so that I can keep the twist going even because the marble is getting very hot right now. You see a lot of twists going on. And now I'm about two thirds of the way done with the twist. So the glass actually would take the twist a lot faster right now because it's really hot. But I'm going a lot slower than is possible to stay in control. Because once the glass gets really hot, it's very convenient for doing a lot of manipulations very rapidly. But that also can lead to the glass doing what it wants instead of what you want. And very often what the glass wants to do is uh, not cool. <laughs> The stuff that I want to do is so slightly different. It looks so much better, I think.
Well, and after all, I've gone through a lot of effort to make it do what I want right now. So I want to make it keep doing what I want. Now, I put in all the twist I want. I'm going to heat up one of the steel rods and detach it and then quickly sphericalize my marble. So this is just about ready to come out. Take it into a marble mold right away. Now let's get a bit of a magnifying glass. Can't tell if it is in focus or not. The text is weird today and sideways. Alright, so I'm mostly sticking with steel because it's faster to get on and off. It's less likely to damage the surface. So light attachment point on the spherical side. And I'm heating the marble as I'm also heating off this steel handle, the steel punty. And I'm going to pull it out. Oop. Knock off that little strand. And get it shaping really quick. Dilly dallied a little bit, so it's a little oval. I'm going to get it more spherical, then I'm going to attach my punties on this axis. So now if I stopped here, this would be what I would call a tornado. But turning it on a different axis, giving it some spin, is a great way to add some new dimension to the design. All right, we got it spherical that time. And I'm going to reattach my punties on a new axis. And I'm going to put the axis kind of where I think it's going to look best. I don't have a rule of thumb for doing the uh, galaxias as far as the second axis until um, I see what they look like. There's a lot of different factors uh, that go in with how your foil was shaped, how big your layers of clear were, how big the dots of color you put in. Um, and so you just sort of have to go with it. But when you look at it like this rotation, you can see foil, foil, razor blade, thin dots. And so that's a cool design on its own. Now, when I twist this, just like I did the first one, if I was doing a couple of these in a row, I would probably still have enough heat in here to get this twisting right away, but I'm going to have to sort of really get some heat in the middle of the marble. let the edges be a little firmer. And now I can, I've got enough heat in there, I can start to put in some twist. You can see those are the razor edges. They're already starting to warp a little bit. And those pole ends where they looked round and you would like see the flare of all the foil come into view, those round sort of uh, axis 
poles are going to be framed in a more oval space once this twist starts to take shape. And here's a really cool intermediary step where you can see everything is really starting to twist. It's like halfway there. Hi. Hi. So is my um, rotation off? Um, when you're watching this, if you're, I don't know if you guys were watching it inside. No, we were not. We got distracted. Okay. When you were watching the pre-show and made that comment, was oh, on my yeah, rotation yeah. off? Yes, it was. Okay. I hope this is not off. I will. Yes. If it is, I'll just download it and then re -up, flip it and re-upload it. Marvel closes you. Yeah. Okay. So my phone is really broken. <laughs> I need a new phone now too. I was camping and all of a sudden all there was no way to switch my rotation. It kept going the opposite. Apparently there's a gyroscopic gyroscopic sensor on this particular model that had happened to fail. And I tried everything except for the percussive maintenance option. which is like the last ditch effort that could also just turn your phone into a rock. That last punty I had 90 degrees off had left a piece of fluff uh, in the glass that I hadn't seen until it got up to a higher temperature. And so that was what I was doing with the tweezer. I was just getting in there and fixing that. Now that I have it hot, I'm going to spherical, sphere up that side, sphere up, like that. Let's sphere it up. Yeah. Well, the surface might be a little bit too rough, but now you can really see it like there's the oval. And if you look, you can like see all the way down in between all those layers. And then same thing on this side. The marble is mostly spherical now. And all my shaping and all my design work uh, is done on the inside. So now all I have to do is improve the sphericalness of the final shape. And since I already have a good attachment point on this messier looking side, I'm going to bring this unattached side to completion if I can. It's very spherical. The surface is rough from going through the marble molds. I'm going to put it through the marble mold one more time. and improve the shape as much as I can. And then now I'm going to use uh, surface tension and heat to let most of those uh, surface imperfections pull in. And I'm going to go to my cherry wood marble molds, which is a thin slice of cherry shaped like a paddle, like a cricket bat, that's got a bunch of holes drilled into it. And I've pre-burned all those holes with some practice marbles. Um, and now I've been using it for a while. Years. <laughs> so I'm just using the rim of those drilled holes as, a, as like a graphite, a very fine graphite that's infused with water because the, pat, the cherry wood paddles are soaked in water. And so steam comes up and keeps the... Uh, marble surface from attaching to the carbon. So, here is the chair with marble paddle. And I'm going to use just the rim of the mold for like a few seconds on each hole. A couple times. Oh, that's far away. <laughs> Closer. All right. And now that 
surface is spherical and very smooth. <laughs> that was for the video thumbnail later. <laughs> and you can really see sort of the depth of the design. It's way deep. And with the the interleaved UV glass, when this thing gets hit with a black light, it's going to look very, even more complicated and neat. And with the gentle pastel color, that's opaque and then transparent, it almost looks like it's one layer of glass, but you can't quite pull it apart with your eye merges the transparent and the opaque. It's like a blending, but there's still a hard razor line in there that's really nice. So probably try this one a couple dozen times before it started to resolve in, in this way, because there needs to be Quite a lot of control in the middle of the marble, um, so you have to have a handle, uh, have a, a good idea of where the heat is in your marble. It has to be interior, but not on the pole's surface. Attachment points to your handles. It's tricky. Um, if you get if your uh, attachment points are hot, then they'll spin and they'll spin out the design where they're attached and nothing's going to happen on the inside. Which can look good to a degree, um, but you have to stop pretty fast. So the idea is to shoot for the center first then work to the outside, which is hard because it's all the way in the middle of the marble, which you're, which you're grabbing on, using your marble key to go to the center of this little planet. Twisted. Where your, the surface is still all happy. Well, we don't know what's going on underneath. We're just having a picnic. Don't tell us if it goes badly. All right, so smooth now. Outside. And pretty spherical. Any of the last uh, improvement of the sphere is going to happen with my cherry wood paddles. And you can see that it's really spinning. It continues to spin even after I launch it and let go. And that means your spherical shape has worked out very nicely. So now I'm going to chill this last attachment point and knock it off into a compressed fiber board that's uh, essentially fiber frax ceramic. And from there, so I've knocked that rod off. I just chilled it and tapped it came right off. Take this and I'm going to heat very vigorously that last attachment point and then let it rest a second. Then vigorously heat it again. Because I really, I need to get a lot of heat into the surface so that it pulls, pulls that last pucker closed without oxidizing the glass. And, I did. and the last part is to get a tweezer, which I've shaped for grabbing marbles. I have an old wire hanger. I've got a bunch of different shapes, uh, a bunch of different sizes that I made. And I'm going to heat this till it's orange and then let it just fall down to black in the 1,100 degree range. I'm going to grab that marble 
in the, in the annealing oven where it's going to sit at 980, 960 for a couple hours. Be right back. So, if this has been sideways, thanks for sticking around. I'll uh, straighten it out before I set it to YouTube and uh, hopefully fix the cameras. This would, that would be a really great um, motivation to get my... I've got this computer that I've set up with like cameras everywhere, but getting... there's such a latency, a delay with the USB bus um, that I've been hesitant to switch to, to, uh, to make the switch from my phone to that system, just because I've done some test, uh, test live shows and they weren't great. The resolution was bad. Um, so I have another camera that's wide angle, like your phones is the 180p wide that I would like to try. I'll probably do a, another test this week. Um, that's boring technical stuff. Anyway, thanks for coming. <laughs> I'll read through your questions and uh, get back to you this evening. I'll see you next week.